Welcome to Inspired by Faith, a program of the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. I'm Emily Jaminette, and I'm joined each program in studio with my friend, Michelle Fanley. This is a show to help you to be inspired by our Catholic faith, live out the gospel message, and deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ. We hope this show provides you an uplifting 30 minutes to help refresh your soul and strengthen your faith. As it was born out of our friendship, we hope and encourage you to deepen and develop spiritual friendships with your sisters in Christ. Hello, Michelle. Well, good morning, Emily. It is so great to be here at St. Gabriel Radio on this bright, sunny day and recording our favorite podcast. I know. It's so fun as we look back at all these inspiring, you know, just friends, speakers, authors, different people in different ways, living out the gospel message. So I'm um, just, I love it. I love that we get to go deeper each episode. Yes. And we, as always, have another incredible guest to introduce to you today. We do. And I love that you had a God moment because you ran into her literally at the Eucharistic Congress. Yes. I was really blessed to say I was just walking in exhibitor hall. I had like 20 minutes to get from, you know, point A to point B and onto the Eucharistic procession. And Pat saw me. It's like, hey, Michelle. And so we connected really quickly and she gave me some of her great resources, which we'll talk about here today. And um, we're happy to have her on the show today. That's awesome. Today we're interviewing Pat Gonnan. She is the host of of Among Women podcast. And she's also very much a frequent guest on Catholic radio and television. She earned a master's degree in theology, and she has certificate in adult faith leadership, theology of the body, and spiritual direction. She and her husband, Bob, are empty nesters in Massachusetts, and she's really just an amazing gift of a woman who shares her gifts and talents for the kingdom and beyond. Amen. Well, welcome, Pat. Hey, ladies. Thank you. It's great to see you. Michelle, what a blessing to see you out in Indy, and uh I've been blessed to work with Emily a couple times in the last year or so, so it's really great to be together again. Thank you. It really is great to be together again. I remember when you first had us on your podcast a number of years ago, it's hard to believe where the time has gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you know what? Isn't it great, you know, this this wonderful network that um, our Lord and Our Lady do to, to bring us together in, in these ways and for His glory at different times? Well, Pat, one of the words that pops in my head when I think of you is wise. I think you're a very wise person, and I hope that we have an opportunity for our listeners to um, to bend an ear and learn a little bit more about your journey. Do you mind sharing a bit about your faith journey and kind of where you've been, where you're at? And uh, you're up in the East Coast. You're in evangelization territory. So tell us about that as well. This, this, is, this is true. Well, um, I grew up in a Catholic home. I was the oldest of three girls. And we were all named with peas, Pat, Peg, and Pam. <laughs> My mom used to call us the sweet peas. But we were very blessed <laughs> to attend uh, Catholic schools growing up um, as a child and as a young adult. I even went to a Catholic university for my undergrad work. But, you know, the thing that I loved to do when I was, you know, a young, uh, you know, middle schooler and high schooler was play guitar. And uh, back in the day where I was growing up, on Long Island in New York, uh, the charismatic renewal was making a big act, impact in different churches, especially the one that I attended. And about a year after I made my confirmation, my mother asked me if I would join a music ministry at a prayer group at the church. And honestly, at first, you know, I was a typical kid who just loved to play music, and I was just kind of there to play music. But eventually I realized that, you know, God was working, like, inviting me to grow in my faith and to make a stronger commitment to Christ. So the thing that really impressed me about these adults at this prayer meeting was they had joy. No matter what was happening in their life, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, their their faith in Christ was like the lifeline, the anchor. And that really had an impact on me. And beginning in my teenage years, you know, I really was invited to go on like a teen retreat and things like that. And it was there that I really started to try to follow Christ. And even though I had some knowledge about God and the faith because of my Catholic background, my faith in those early days was really ignited through the faith of a few close friends and these very influential adults. So it was like, you know, you can learn about your faith, but often faith is caught, not taught. And that was kind of my experience. God wanted me to know his love, and he put these people in my life to to love me. And, you know, this was back in the dark ages before 
there was an internet, you know, I'm really a dinosaur. <laughs> you know? Before you could download prayers and inspirational talks right to your iPhone or, you know, your smartphone, it was really a work of the Holy Spirit right in the parish where I lived. And that was such a gift. And it remained a gift in my whole life, you know, as I've matured and, and grown and married and had family and had different jobs in my life, whatever the circumstances were, I always felt like God still had me as as his beloved child and and was also calling me to share about my life with him and my life of prayer with whoever I was with in those different circumstances in my life. So today I... Uh, I'm a married uh, woman who is an empty nester and has uh, six grandchildren. I call it living the dream. <laughs> and now I live in, uh, you know, the uh, greater Boston area where uh, I work in uh, Catholic publishing and have for, for many years. And, and that's, that's a gift, too. It's a way for me to uh, give back in term- and also encourage other people in the faith. That's really inspiring. And I remember every time I worked with you, you always were joyful. Even if you were in a, a bit of a squeeze, we talked about that squeeze of, you know, caring for our parents, caring for those in our community and how that, what that balance looks like or that, um, you know, continual surrender looks like. So I thank you. And maybe share a little bit about Living Faith Magazine. We're looking at these two great publications, uh, Living Faith Kids, Living Faith Daily Catholic Devotions. Um, maybe share a little bit about that transition as well of going from really, you know, spending many years about developing your writing voice and then, as you mentioned, giving back uh, in this type of way. Well, thanks for mentioning Living Faith, because that is actually my day job, if you will. I'm the editorial director for Living Faith, and it's a daily devotional booklet. It provides Catholic reflections based on one of the readings of the day from the Mass, published each quarter, and these reflections are written by women and men from a variety of backgrounds, lay people, as well as clergy and religious. It's kind of cool because we're having an anniversary year this year. It's Living Faith's 40th anniversary, and it's been a very popular book through the last several decades. And for almost 20 years, there's also been a children's version known as Living Faith Kids, which is just another page-a-day devotional for children helping them to learn to pray, helping them to hear a word of Scripture, giving them a little prayer prompt at the bottom of the page so that they can raise their hearts to God. So I love this because um, it's a a moment of prayer. It's a moment to being open to Scripture and God's Word. It's a moment to um, maybe start your day. You know, a lot of people love to spend time in prayer in the morning and have a, have a good start to the day. It's just a page-a-day devotional. It's not, it's not a really long uh, devotional. It's kind of short, and I think that's good for people to maybe be on the go or maybe as a lead-in to more prayer that they may bring to their morning. So I really love it. I, I love having a cup of coffee with Jesus and living faith. And I think parents like living faith kids because it's very accessible, and it's something that they could even pray with their children. It's very good uh, for teachers in the classroom to maybe do a little devotional uh, moment with their with their students in the Catholic classroom. So uh, I'm often inspired by all the writers that I get to work with to bring both of these magazines to press each quarter. And it's also found uh, online, of course, at livingfaith.com. So this part of my journey as a, as a writer, you know, for years I was writing under my own name and, and publishing on, online and having the ability to write articles for magazines and online um, portals, as well as uh, having a few books published in my name, as well as books that I was a contributor or a collaborator to. Like, that is all wonderful, wonderful but I, I think it's a kind of a factor of my own age and, and, and where I'm at now after 20 years of doing this, to just kind of turn the page and be invited to be an editor, to work with other people's work, to allow their voices to, um, you know, bring the gospel forth through their experience and through their, their, their written word. Um, I, I think that's just part of it, you know, like, like God has given me a beautiful season of being an author in my own right. But now the, to be an editor is um, to kind of have responsibility to carefully hold, you know, the words of others and the voices of others 
to, to be brought forth in the kingdom. Yeah, I think that's really beautiful. I am a nurse by trade, and the joking joke in nursing is, you know, nurses eat their young. And I think as women in general, we tend to do that a lot. Like we see these new, you know, maybe authors in this case or whatever it is coming up into the workforce. And it, it brings out a little bit of jealousy. And, and um, sometimes we don't embrace these new people. And instead of helping them, we kind of like trample them. So for you to be able to see these people who desire to write, you could see this raw talent and to help draw them into becoming a, a you know, a honed in author. I know Emily and I really appreciated that ourselves with our own experience with editors that, you know, you don't know anything when you're coming in as a brand new author. We were not English majors. So having someone who's experienced, who can teach you how to write, even like I said, you can still teach an old dog new tricks. We learned a lot in our 30s mm-hmm. and 40s. Um, it's really a beautiful gift that you're able to give to the world because, right, you're, you're not going to, we're not going to live forever. So we need to pass on and continue to transmit the faith with new authors and, and people. And, and anybody can do this, right? And no matter what your, um, your business is. Yeah, I think this idea of, um, uh, I, I don't want to say put yourself out of a job kind of thing, but to be willing to be collaborative intergenerationally is so important. It's, a, it's an important thing in the spiritual life, too. You know, sometimes we just want to hang out with our friends, you know, who are of our same age and experience. But I think the Lord really is calling us to look deeper. Like, you know, a, a woman my age should have friends in the generations that are following her as well as in her own generation. And I think that translates to the business world. I think that translates to, you know, the world that I'm in with Catholic publishing and that sort of thing, to to realize that we, the family of God is so big. You know, the body of Christ is so, so deep and wide that we need to just maintain that openness, and, um, you know, one to another. One of my favorite things, Pat and Michelle, is the gift of when we bring women together, multi-generational. And I just kept thinking when you said that word, you know, in my head popped the picture where all the women are gathered at the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference of all these different ages and all these different places in life. And some of them are in the springtime of their life, you know, still holding their mom's hand, navigating the crowd, and others are are towards, you know, the the, the end dawn. And and what I what I was just reflecting on your words is there's enough love and kingdom for everyone. You know, this isn't a competition, but oftentimes as women, we forget, as Michelle said, you know, we forget the real goal here. And I think, Pat, your spirit of collaboration um, really does, it doesn't only come out in the work that you're doing now, but in your attitude. And I love how you talked about those early years of your conversion leading up to now, that it's the same Jesus. It's just expressed differently. So um, I'd love for you to share a few more words on that, because I think if we can see the role of mentorship, and obviously by your certificates and your degree, you know, that's something that's important to you as a Catholic woman. Yeah, you know, I I, I used to have uh, one of the spiritual mothers in my life um, was a woman named Jenny, who had a PhD in theology, and she um, uh, she really encouraged me to go on, you know, educationally and things like that. But when you would talk to Ginny about her degrees and stuff like that, she goes, oh, that's just proof that, you know, like I went to the wizard and I have proof that I have a brain, you know, like <laughs> don't, don't, don't trip over that, you know, um, you know, because she was teaching on the college level and everything else. And that, that's part of the requirements to teach on the college level. But um you know, education is a beautiful thing, and as a catechist, I love that people want to go spiritually deeper, whether it's with the Bible or the catechism or other different, learning different doctrines of the Church and how they're grounded in Scripture and things like that. Like, I love, I love that, you know. Um, you know, I'm kind of a Catholic nerd, you know, from that, you know, from that, you know uh, for, for lack of a better way to uh, describe it. But the, at the heart of that, is just wanting to embrace God in a way that I can share it and and tackle some of the difficult questions with people and and things like that. So, uh, you know, degrees are fine, and I'm not discouraging anybody on their educational path. You know, the Lord has us all on different paths. But one of the things I share with women in Bible studies and just when we're hanging out in the parish doing different special ministries or something together as women— I always say the most important thing 
is that your personal testimony is what convince, convinces others to come to Christ. I, I've done so much work with Bible study and, and teaching people about the Catechism, and, and there's a beautiful learning that happens there. But it's, mo- it's most important to me, how I was converted was other people sharing their witness to me about who Jesus is, how Jesus saves us, how Jesus comes to us. Um, you know, through the sacraments and things like that, like people sharing their own experience. So never, um, you know, never knock your own t- testimony or your ability to share your Jesus story or your Jesus moments with other people. I feel like that is part of who we are as the body of Christ, to, to be able to give voice to that that your experience has value, and you know what? The Lord will use your experience to touch hearts and minds. I love, Pat, in the um, part for your book and the advertisement for your book, All In, um, you wrote, More than any single factor in my life, belonging to Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church has been the, has had the greatest impact on me. Faith gives meaning to everything in my life. And I feel like running into you at the Eucharistic Congress, like that's exactly what the Congress was about. Uh, so I yeah. thought maybe if you're going to reflect a little bit more on this statement and maybe even a little bit about the Congress and and this too, like sharing your testimony, that is what is next, the next level of the last this next year of the Eucharistic Congress is moving forward and uh, sharing your faith with others. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's a That's a really good question. You know, I talked about when I was a teenager, you know, Jesus saved me as a youth who was searching for some meaning in her life. Jesus is saving me today because he's drawing me deeper into repentance and understanding what it means to fully give my life over to him in different ways. The sacrifices I make for Jesus look different at age 64 than they looked at 44 and then they, and what it looked like at 24. And then Jesus is saving me. I have hope, you know, to meet Jesus face to face at the end of my life and at the end of time. So this idea that Jesus, belonging to Jesus is so central to my my world. I mean, it's absolutely true, you know, like I, I accept that as that's the given of my life and my gift is a life from him. But this idea of the church, I, I'm just, I, the, the thing that's at the heart of that is that God's grace is in the sacramental life of the church. And that's such an important thread in my life because it's that grace that builds on my nature that's helping to perfect me. It's helping me not to not to make too many, you know, serious, you know, footfalls or mistakes, or or it, it leads me away from temptation to sin. You know, I love that uh, the way our sacramental system is set up. Every important turning point in our life comes with a sacrament, and that the sacraments strengthen us to live this life. And I think with the Eucharistic Congress, uh, you know, I have come through a, a, I would call, a hard season of life, a difficult season in my life um, of late. You know, my husband and I have both lost parents, you know, and and buried parents in in recent years. I think we've also um, been dealing with some health issues, both of us, that, that are part of the normal accompaniment of aging. And I think a big one that kind of was a surprise to me was just like in the last year and a half, we downsized and left our community of 30 years and and moved to a new place. And that was a lot harder than I thought. Like I thought I'd be a little more resilient through that, but it was a, it was a hard, it was a hard thing for me to, to make that move. So in terms of the Congress, I'm still processing a lot of my experience there, but what I can share is that, I really felt that the Lord was healing the parts of my heart that needed to be shored up after so many of these things I was grieving, you know, leaving my old home, leaving, uh, you know, loved ones, you know, in his care as they passed, you know, into death, healing some of the burdens that I have been carrying. So, So the word that I'm using in terms of my own experience of the Congress right now is that I feel restored, like I feel God is restoring me in these different ways and giving me strength for the time that I'm living in now. The other thing that was fantastic about the Congress, and, you know, when you work in Catholic publishing and you work in the Catholic sphere, 
you're not immune to all the different scandals of the church and the levels of negativity in the world toward Catholicism. There's so many heartbreaking, soul-crushing stories and situations that many of us have been in um, who, you know, still continue to profess belief in, in Christ and belief in the church. Then we've had the pandemic and all kinds of things that have really brought a lot of pain and suffering in people's lives. And at this Congress, we just all brought it all to Jesus. You know, Jesus is still on the throne. He loves us. He's bringing us closer and deeper in the knowledge that we're his beloved. It was such an encouragement to me and a real rekindling of, I think, what the Holy Spirit is saying to the Church right now, that our faith is a gift, and what a gift it is, not only for our own healing, for our own salvation, but a gift for the world. You know, I've been a Eucharistic adorer since 2001. I belong to a parish that had its own adoration chapel, which is a gift. Not all parishes have that. So I've had a weekly adoration hour for, you know, more than 20 years now. And when God moved us to this new church, they had one too. What a blessing that I got to continue that that weekly hour, you know, with our Lord in the Eucharistic chapel in the new town that I live in. But, you know, Jesus is present in every tabernacle, in every Catholic church. And we can be before his Eucharistic presence in so many ways in, in any of these churches, you know, where there's a tabernacle. So for me, the Congress was kind of like an upper room experience with Jesus, a beautiful move of the Holy Spirit. But you know what happened to the apostles after their Pentecost experience in the upper room? They were sent out. And so are we. And I'm, and I'm praying for all the people who went to that Congress, because we had this beautiful little taste of heaven uh, in Indianapolis, and now we have to go share that. We have to go out from here. Wow, that is so powerful. You know, Pat, as you were talking, I, I was writing some notes and just reflecting on your journey is so similar mm-hmm. to our journey, each one of us. You know, we we go through difficulties. We we go through loss of family members. We have health issues. You know, we um, all of a sudden get a, an inspiration to move, like you mentioned, moving. And yet, you know, what I heard you say is that despite all of these challenges, your stable foundation is your Catholic faith. And that ability to adore our Lord, you know, to 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 for twenty years of your life or more, you know, you you've taken time out to carve in adoration and going to mass each week and saying your prayers. And what I think is so beautiful is that when you you know work during the day and printing and and publishing and and doing that, you know, as seeing the industry of it, but also seeing the intimacy of it with regards to our faith. I think that really does point to the bigger picture, which is God, and He loves us, right. and He's calling us. And I loved, again, uh, how you also reflected on um, that He redeems us, and that we also need to repent. And, and that word repent is so hard, because it requires humility, it requires meekness, it requires the inner reflection. And for women, you know, as we um, direct the show primary towards Catholic women, I think your journey is is so beautiful because it's it's part of all of our journey. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a gift um, to to be in the company of of women like yourselves and to be in company uh, with the community, you know, of of the faithful, whether it's at a at a congress or um, you know, like the uh, the women's conferences in in Columbus or just your own local Bible study or something. I think we all have a need for community in in this life. Like, we're not meant to do this alone. And I think that's the the joy. I mean, you know, just running into Michelle at, you know, on the Congress floor, you know, in the exhibition hall, you know, just what a joy it is to see someone that you know and that you know that it's a— you know, it's a, it's just a special grace, you know, to, to meet a sister in Christ in this way. Well, and I think we're dealing with that. We all want that kind of connection. Oh, yeah. And we're so glad that you, you know, spent some time with us and really provided us that opportunity to reflect on the journey. And each season in life has these different joys. And I, I love to hear, you know, as you even approach retirement, you know, where you're at is um, is inspiring because we're never going to just retire from kingdom work, right, Pat? We're we're in it uh, to win it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. My husband and I are, are on the on the runway to, uh, you could say, toward retirement. The question is, you know, like landing the plane, like when you're actually going to retire. Um, you know, both he and I are, you know, 64. And, you know, there are, there are definite things you have to do to kind of plan to retire. I don't really know when this is exactly going to happen. Um, you know, I think I probably have a few more years in me to, to do some work. But there's other family things that are going on that may that may welcome retirement a little sooner. It's hard to know. But the, to not focus on just like, you know, like is my 401K in shape or something like that. Like we are really praying and discerning. My, I went to the Congress with my husband. We went as a couple. We drove, you know, drove in the car together. We had a lot of conversations on the way there and on the way home. And we really feel like we've kind of both had – these lovely careers um, doing different work together, um, you know, he doing his job and me doing mine, if you will. But we feel like we're at this point now, if we do anything next, it's going to be together. Like we're asking the Lord to call us together. Into that's, something. And that's really the highlight we're going to have to leave it on because we're wrapping up so quickly this time flies, but it's doing it together, right? Sister, sister, yeah. spouse together. And we have just, a, we're closing up, we're wrapping up, but I'd love for our listeners to stay connected with you. So how can someone hear more about your journey and um, receive that inspiration before we close in prayer? Um, find the uh, publishing work at livingfaith.com. And uh, I have a personal website, patgone.net, P-A-T-G-O-H-N.net. Happy to... Uh, have anybody check that out if they're interested in more. Oh, Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you, Pat. And we're going to close the, today in a little prayer from Living Faith Magazine. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father in heaven, you hold this day in your hands just as you have held every other day of my life. Give me the trust I need to put one foot in front of the other, though I may not know where I will finally wind up. May I always be grateful for your providential care and at peace about my destiny trusting that you will lead me home. Amen. amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining us for Inspired by Faith. We hope that you are blessed and inspired by this episode. To find out more about the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference, visit columbuscatholicwomen.com. And to hear about our work, visit inspirethefaith.com. Thank you. Thank you.